Hey everybody, we're back. Recently a viewer uh, responded to a video that I did about dried egg powder and he was a bit taken back about the uh, outrageous cost of these things and frankly, I can't argue with him. Uh, the price of emergency preparedness foods has been skyrocketing, especially since last year and there seems to be no end to it. Right now the companies that are putting this stuff out just seem to hoist the flag as high as people will salute it and on and on it continues. That got me thinking though, there are a lot of products and options that you can add to your emergency food storage that won't break the bank and we're going to do a series of videos on that very topic starting today. Let's get started. Without question one of the most costly items to any food storage plan has to be meats and proteins. Uh, canned meats like this as well as freeze-dried meats have gone up substantially in price over the last year. Uh, number 10 cans of freeze-dried meat like this can routinely run $50 to $80 uh, currently and they're a great product to add if you can afford them. However, a lot of people are struggling uh, with their budgets and the cost of these types of foods, at least in any kind of uh, meaningful quantity. So today's budget slashing emergency food item that we're going to take a look at is TVP or textured vegetable protein. These products are made out of a ground up soy flour and I have never eaten any of this stuff. We're going to taste test one of them today, but probably the biggest uh, value in this product is this number 10 can of beef substitute uh, cost me about $18 when I purchased it versus the 50 or $80 that you're going to spend for real freeze-dried meats. Although there are some controversy that we're going to talk about a little bit later in the video with TVP, uh, our primary focus is going to be on the taste quality and overall value uh, of this stuff in any emergency food storage plan. So let's cook it up and see what we okay, think. Here's our instructions and ingredients list on the back of the can for the chicken bits. I decided to go ahead and open up this one since it's the uh, oldest one I have. I purchased it in about 2013. Um, I've read a lot of varying uh, estimated time frames on how long TVP will last stored. And something that you need to think about is this little disclaimer right here in the can. I don't know if that's focusing too well or not, but it basically says uh, shelf life estimates are based on industry studies from sources deemed reputable. Since Augustine Farms has no control over individual storage practices, they must disclaim any liability or warranty uh, for particular results. What does that mean? It means that even though they can tell you this stuff lasts 20 years, it may not. And if there's any problems, they'll just say, well, you, you stored it incorrectly. And frankly, I think a lot of people do. All of these foods have to be kept in a cool, dry location. You can't store stuff like this in a hot garage and you know, in just any kind of condition anywhere because it will significantly uh, reduce the shelf life of any of these products. Okay, all that being said, here's our breakdown over here uh, per quarter cup. And we've talked about this before in my freeze-dried food, the good, the bad, and the ugly video. Um, a quarter of a cup of this stuff, yeah, I don't know that that would be a meaningful serving to anybody if you were relying on this uh, you know in any kind of a grid down or you know emergency situation they like doing that however because then they can advertise on the front that you're getting a whole bunch of servings in this can well let's go ahead and we'll take a cup of this product to two parts water and we'll let it simmer for about 10 minutes and we'll see what we come up with okay hopefully we'll hear a hissing sound where the air is being sucked into the can here And there it is. Okay, and here's what we're dealing with inside the can here. I think I mentioned already that the little bacon bits that you uh, put on your salad and the salad bars at restaurants is supposedly TVP also. Looking at this kind of confirms that to me. Um, I just want to give a shout out to August and Farms also for filling this can up with product. I've already pulled some out of this, uh, about a cup or two has come out of this the kind of thing that I think deserves a, a little bit of spotlight uh, to the company because some of these things you open up and you'll find the level of food to be way way lower 
uh, than this. So we appreciate that. Okay, this is what we're going to do here. We're going to take one cup of dried product and two cups of water that I've got coming to a simmer or boil. And that's for the directions on the back of the can. It says two parts water to one part chicken bits. Simmer about 10 minutes. So as soon as our water comes up to a boil, we'll add our chicken bits and we'll see what we come up with. Okay, our little chicken bits are simmering away in the pot as specified. We'll let it go for about 10 minutes, as what they called out for in the back of the can. And we'll see what we come up with here. Let's give this little piece right here a taste test and see what we got. You know, honestly, that's pretty tasty. Um, it has a very uh, flavored chicken taste to it, and that's you know right on the can, chicken flavored, uh, with almost a, a little bit of a bean type uh, aftertaste to it. They claim that this product has a lot more fiber uh, in it, which would be good, especially if you were eating a lot of emergency foods uh, in an emergency situation for any extended period of time. I think fiber would be uh, a welcome addition to uh, any diet if you're eating a lot of rice and other starches and things like that. Overall, the flavor is very good. I would have no problem eating that at all. I could see seasoning that up with some soy sauce, maybe throwing it in some rice with some pineapple. Just let your mind uh, go wild with all the different kinds of things you could do with a product like this. Overall, I would say that this is a very welcome addition to any emergency food storage uh, where cost or budget is a problem and maybe keeping you from purchasing anything. I think one of the other benefits to TVP is all the different flavors that the stuff comes in. You can get chicken flavored. Uh, this taco meat I've heard is very good. Uh, beef flavored. There's sausage and all kinds of things available. Uh, just look online and you'll see all the different options that are out there. But this is a very uh, varied, flexible, and priced well meat substitute that could be a valuable protein in your food storage plan. Yeah, I mentioned in the earlier part of the video that there were some health concerns or issues uh, surrounding TVP, at least some controversy at minimum. Some of those issues are the high amount of estrogen that's found in soy products, soy flour. Uh, could be of concern, especially for men uh, eating this product or a lot of this product. Um, additionally, there's a high amount of fiber in this stuff, which causes gastrointestinal upset in some people. However, I don't know that that's a problem with the product as much as it is uh, the low amount of fiber intake uh, in most of the American diet. Um, maybe across the globe, I don't know. Uh, I'm not a nutritional expert, and I just did a cursory review of this stuff uh, online before making this video. So there's a lot about it that you'll want to do your own research uh, on and see if it's right for you. Uh, just like with any food product, medicine, or anything that we ingest, you're going to want to do your own research and figure out what's right, um, what fits your particular nutritional needs, and any type of food allergies and that type of thing. Uh, on the topic of allergies, soy is a known allergen to a lot of people, so obviously uh, if you're in that category, it's something that you'll want to avoid. Overall, though, I think this is a product that's worth taking a look at for people that are on a budget and can't afford canned meats and freeze-dried meats and those types of food. My freeze-dried foods are the last line of defense that I'll be tapping into. Um, and by the time I get down to eating that kind of stuff, we're in a serious situation. And I doubt some of these issues we just discussed will be uh, the primary concern that I would have. So again, do your own research and figure out if these things work for you. Uh, the idea of this video is to just put the information out there about these products for those that may not be aware of them. And it could be a life-saving tool for somebody that doesn't have enough money uh, to do other. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button down below if you like the content that we put out for you in today's video. That does help us out with the channel. Remember, as always, get ready so that you and your family can succeed and thrive. Video that we put out about dried ag. Recently, a viewer. <laughs>